This video is sponsored by CuriosityStream. Watch the extended version of this video when you sign up for CuriosityStream and Nebula using the link in the description. So something I've struggled with a lot on this channel is how to talk about AI systems and algorithms in a way that is both technically accurate, but also relatable and understandable and useful to all of you. And the more that I make videos, the more that I've realized that there's one term in particular that I seem to get hung up on because I use it all the time, but it doesn't have that clear of a definition. And that term is artificial intelligence. So this video was inspired by some recent coverage of an article in the Harvard Data Science Review that essentially argues that we should stop calling everything artificial intelligence. In short, Dr. Jordan, a professor at UC Berkeley, argues that the term AI is misunderstood both by the public but also by researchers. In fact, take a second, pause this video, and leave a comment down below with your definition of artificial intelligence, and then check out the other comments and see how well everyone's definitions line up. Chances are everyone's definition is a little bit different, and if you actually look at dictionary definitions of artificial intelligence, you'd find the same thing. And that's because we don't necessarily have a consistent definition of artificial intelligence. Most of what we call artificial intelligence these days would fall under the field of machine learning, but sometimes it can also be called control theory, statistics, or a bunch of actual human workers doing actual work behind the scenes because human labor isn't sexy anymore. Andre over at Skynet Today pointed out in this article a couple months ago that definitions of artificial artificial intelligence tend to fall into three categories. Definitions that focus on the field of research, definitions that focus on machine intelligence, and definitions that focus on intelligent entities. And in case you're wondering, when I talk about artificial intelligence on this channel, I'm pretty much always talking about the first definition, referring to the field of research, and if I'm not, I will do my best to make that very clear. Between academic discussions, media coverage of ongoing research, and general discourse around artificial intelligence in the general public, we use all three of these definitions effectively interchangeably, but we act as if we're all operating off of the same definition. And so in researching for this video, I was curious as to what the original definition of artificial intelligence was in the first place. It turns out that the term was coined in 1965 by John McCarthy, then a professor at Dartmouth who eventually went on to MIT. At the time, there was a lot of interest in developing intelligent systems, in this case, systems that could replicate human intelligence, and there were two different approaches to reaching that goal. McCarthy's artificial intelligence focused on a logic-based approach, believing that human intelligence could be described precisely enough that we could create sets of rules around it that would turn into algorithms. Norbert Weiner at MIT led the other approach called cybernetics, which focused more on feedback-based learning. In other words, developing systems that learn from feedback in order to replicate intelligence. And if the second approach sounds like what we now call artificial intelligence to you, it might sound like things like reinforcement learning. That's because, ironically, McCarthy's artificial intelligence term has now been adopted to describe Weiner's research approach. What's important to take away from the story is the fact that the term artificial intelligence was coined as an aspirational goal, not as a description of the abilities of current technologies, and certainly not as a way of anthropomorphizing algorithms themselves. What we currently call AI may perform tasks that we previously believed required human intelligence, but these systems are generally not independent self-sufficient systems that can perform abstract reasoning by themselves. In spite of the fact that that is often how they're described in popular media and tends to be one of the bigger misconceptions about AI systems. So now that we know where the term artificial intelligence comes from, let's talk a little bit about why we don't have a consistent definition for it. And there are a lot of reasons for this, but I'm going to focus on three. First, defining and achieving artificial intelligence requires us to have a definition of intelligence and a way of measuring it. When it comes to human intelligence, historically this was done using things like intelligence intelligence quotients, or IQ testing. But IQ testing doesn't capture all forms of intelligence, notably social and creative intelligence, and it's generally seen as a measure of intelligence within academic settings, but not necessarily translatable outside of that, in addition to the fact that it's highly correlated with demographic factors. It also turns out that a lot of these intelligence quotient tests that we developed that we believed could only be solved using human intelligence can actually fairly easily be solved using algorithms. So does that mean that algorithms are intelligent? Well, this gets into something called the AI effect, which is essentially the phenomenon that whenever an algorithm completes a task that we previously believed required human intelligence, we now argue that that task no longer requires intelligence in the first place to complete. And this often happens with machine learning systems that have become fairly commonplace, so things like targeted advertising are a great example of this, because it's become so common that we don't really refer to targeted advertising as artificial intelligence anymore, it's just 
targeted advertising. The second reason why I think we use so many definitions of artificial intelligence as if they were interchangeable is because artificial intelligence is a very interdisciplinary field and different disciplines tend to use different vocabularies to talk about their work. This can lead to different fields establishing different definitions for the same term and the term bias is actually a great example of this because statistical bias and bias in machine learning don't usually mean the same thing. More broadly, scientific researchers and the general public also use different definitions for the same types of terms. So when we talk about artificial intelligence in research settings, we're often using a different definition than is used in the general public. In particular, the general public may implicitly associate a level of active thinking and will to algorithms that researchers wouldn't. And a lot of this has to do with the way that we talk about artificial intelligence publicly, saying things like an AI thinks this or an AI learn to do this, which implies a level of agency that algorithms don't actually have. And lastly, at least for this video, as artificial intelligence has gained more popularity and interest, it's become a bit of a marketing term. Whether you're trying to convince a consumer to buy a smart toothbrush or trying to raise money for your AI startup, people have realized that labeling something as artificial intelligence tends to command more attention and with that more money. So what does that mean for the future of how we talk about AI systems? Well, if this is something you want to learn more about, there's actually a decent number of guides on how to talk about artificial intelligence research for journalists and people who are interested in public communication. So I'll leave some links to those in the description. You can check them out. Personally, I've been trying to be pretty intentional about how I talk about these systems here. In fact, you may have noticed that in the last few months, I've switched from calling things artificial intelligence to calling them machine learning because I think it's a more precise term. But sometimes I slip up. In fact, I'm pretty sure I slipped up a few times in this video, so I'm still working on it. In the interest of time, I'm going to stop here, but I ended up doing a much deeper dive into the definitions of human and machine intelligence in the Nebula Plus version of this video. If you're new to my channel, Nebula is a creator-built platform where you get to watch my videos ad-free, and me and some other creators that you've probably heard of can create and experiment with awesome content without having to worry about demonetization or paying tribute to the YouTube algorithm. We're thrilled to be partnering with CuriosityStream, a subscription streaming service with thousands of documentaries and non-fiction videos. Want to learn more about the intersection of human and machine intelligence? Check out The Brain Factory to learn about how researchers are trying to upload our brains to digital avatars. And where Curiosity Stream is all about big budget nonfiction documentaries, we're building Nebula so that education creators have a place to try out content that might not work well on YouTube. On Nebula, you'll find ad-free videos from some of your favorite creators, from tier two to neurotransmissions to the coding train, and my Nebula Plus content, which includes journal clubs of interesting papers and extended versions of the videos that you see on my channel. You'll also find Nebula originals like Tom Scott's Game Show Money or Very Good Trivia Show, where Sam from Wendover challenges myself, real engineer and City Beautiful to a bunch of interesting and a bit bizarre challenges. Curiosity Stream loves independent creators and wants to help us grow our platform, so if you click on the link in the description or use my promo code Jordan, you can get access to Curiosity Stream for 26% off their annual plans, with Nebula included for free as long as you are a Curiosity Stream member. That's less than $15 a year. A lot of you have asked about the best way to directly support my channel, and the best way to do that is by supporting my sponsors who support me. So sign up for Curiosity Stream and Nebula to watch my videos ad-free and get access to the bonus content at curiositystream.com Jordan, or using the promo code Jordan. Otherwise, if you like this video, you can let me know by smashing the like button and subscribing to my channel. You can also check out this video on the AI effect that I made a while back if you want to learn a little bit more about that. And otherwise, if you'd like to follow my PhD life, you can do so on Twitter and Instagram, and I will see you all on Monday. Bye!